Welcome to Real Truth, real quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with my friend Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? Good. Hello. Well, so we got a, a question today that I think probably a lot of people either hmm. have, have thought about, maybe they don't think about it, but it's kind hmm. of a kind of a toughie. Hmm. And so the question goes like this: Is it okay for a Christian to use birth control? Yeah. Well, it is a question we need to think about because it's involving one of the greatest privileges that God has given man, which is to be fruitful and multiply. Um, and so let's start by saying we want to be thoughtful people. We're supposed to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. We're to make sure that our minds aren't influenced by the world, but we, we're to be conformed, right, uh, to the, the mind that God wants us to have, specifically be transformed by the renewing of our mind, as it says in Romans 12. So we want to be thoughtful about this. Um, I'll start by answering the question this way. Uh, children are a gift from the Lord. That's what the scripture says. They're, they're a blessing. And so anything that informs us that says children are something to be avoided, uh, children are, are a curse, ch children are a burden, children are a bother, that is not thinking with the mind of God, okay? And so uh, if the purpose of taking birth control is to uh, keep you from being blessed with children because you think children are always a bother, that's a problem. Now, when you have children, Okay, the scripture says that God told us in Genesis 1 to be fruitful and multiply, and then he says to fill the earth and subdue it. So we have a responsibility to manage our world, okay? And so there is some uh, opportunity in the midst of that to determine, okay, when do I want to go about bringing forth these children? And there's all different kinds of methods that you can employ to uh, determine whether or not you have children. I want to say one more thing about birth control. Birth control that is taken so that you can... Um, have sex with whoever you want, whenever you want, without any consequence, is a problem. Why? Because God says already in Scripture we're not supposed to have sex with whoever we want, whenever we want. Yeah. Okay, that's a problem. Yep. And so uh, birth control taken because I, I might be with my boyfriend and something will happen that it shouldn't have happened, um, that's a bad reason to take birth control because I'm planning to sin. Yep, so I think in this episode we're really going to aim for the married couple. Yeah. You're, you're, you're in God's will as yeah. far as... Yes, so but let's just make sure that's on here, yeah. okay? Because some folks are going to watch this video, and that's going to be a question. We don't ever do things in case we sin, right? We do things so that we don't sin. We flee immorality. We pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on God from a pure heart. Yep. Now, to the issue of birth control. Um, let me just say this is a complicated topic that's worth a lot more research. We'll put some good links at the bottom because we're doing real truth real quick. Here's what I want to encourage people with. We either believe life begins at conception or we don't. If you're going to use birth control, okay, um, you want to start by saying it's a pretty safe biblical position to say, I don't want to use any birth control that aborts a viable life, okay? These are abortifacients. You've heard that term a lot because of Obamacare and people saying we don't want to uh, provide abortifacients for our people, which are things that make abortions happen. What's an abortion? It is the termination of a viable life inside the mother. And there are certain birth control devices or pills that cause uh, a fertilized egg to not implant into the uterine wall and therefore be aborted. Okay? Um, some people might even call uh, that. Uh, some of the extreme forms of that, emergency contraceptives, which are RU486, or Plan B, which means, hey, Plan A didn't come to fruition, which is we had sex, we didn't get pregnant, so Plan B is abort the pregnancy. That's a problem, okay? Because life is precious and matters to God. So if you are going to use a birth control pill, and we still haven't answered the ultimate question is, can you use any kind of birth control method? Um, make sure you're not using an abortifacient if you're somebody who believes, like I do, and like I think the Scripture teaches, and the easiest position to uh, support scientifically is that a fertilized egg at conception is where life begins. Okay? Now, what about the spectrum of things that are birth control, devices, methods, or pills, and should we ever have sex for any other purpose than procreation? It was long the position of the church that we shouldn't, <laughs> I say the church, People who were writing and who were quoted often um, for years would almost make the case that uh, sex for pleasure is a problem. The problem with that is it contradicts Scripture. 
okay? Um, God has given us sex for the purpose of procreation and creating oneness. And part of the way it creates oneness in us is it involves deep pleasure. And the Bible, in Proverbs and Song of Solomon and in other places, it encourages us to enjoy each other. The Bible is clear that one reason we should deny each other from having sex is for the purpose of uh, spiritual disciplines, okay? So uh, at times we can say, hey, listen, for the purpose of fasting and prayer right now, we're not going to pursue oneness with each other because we're going to pursue oneness with the Father. But what about, are there any methods of birth control that aren't an offense to God? Well, and the answer to that would be, I think God's given us some freedom here, but uh, not freedom to see children as a curse and uh, not freedom to terminate life once it comes. So do your research. Uh, on birth controls, whatever you do, uh, you know, do in a matter that your heart doesn't condemn you, have a clear conscience before God. Uh, start with the understanding that children are a gift from the Lord, okay, and that they're a blessing. But know that you are given the ability to uh, rule in your world and to, and to manage your world. And so you might say, right now, we believe as a married couple that we're going to choose not to have children at this moment. Okay, and there's again some of the methods. Some people would say, you know, when you use the rhythm method, you know what the rhythm method is, Rick, is that you you look at when the woman's menstrual cycle is. You know, that there's five to eight days a month when a woman is viable um, to have uh, conception happen, and you try and avoid those five to eight days. And you know what they call people who use the rhythm method? Rhythm method? No, they call them parents. Parents. That's what they call them. Okay, <laughs> so some uh, birth control devices <laughs> along the way uh, have anywhere from a one to a hundred success rate to uh, as poor as 30 out of 100 people still get pregnant using certain birth control devices. Some of those birth control devices, again, are ab uh, abortifacients, which we would not think is consistent with a biblical ethic, which is to have a conceived uh, a, a woman, a fertilized egg, not implant in the uterine wall. That's problematic, and we want to stay away from that. You've got to have a matter of, uh, of, of uh, personal study before the Lord to determine if you feel like um, you have the freedom. Uh, I will say this. I, I, our Catholic friends take the position that there's never any method of birth control that's appropriate. And um, I don't think you can support that biblically. I do think with my Catholic friends that you need to see children as a gift from the Lord and that being a parent is a privilege and shepherding the heart of a child towards Christ and multiplying a godly heritage is a tremendous privilege. So start with that as your premise, then rule your world, and do not abort viable pregnancies. All right, good stuff. And we'll put some links, like Todd said, in the show notes, realtruthrealquick.com. You can check those out. And if you have any questions, anything we can pray for you about, feel free to send us an email. There's an email right below me here, and we'd love to answer some of those questions for you. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick. Real Truth Real Quick.